Okay, this is our lesson on working with roofs. Uh, some of the things that we'll be discussing in this lesson will be the roof tool default settings, geometry and positioning, pitch of the roof, show and link to stories, the floor plan display, cut surfaces, determining plate locations, explaining the pivot point reference axis, using poly roof tool, poly roof generation, uh, the poly roof generates hips and editing those hips. Each roof plane can be edited as a single element. Using control click to join roof edges. Using control click to set spot heights. Mitering ridges and valleys. Transforming hip into gable. A couple of different methods. The trim to roof command. The undo trim command. Uh, using roof for solid element operations, building roofs element by element, editing roofs in 3D, working with uh, domed roof, working with the barrel vaulted roof, working with the multi-sloped roof, working with uh, composite roofs, working with the automatic roof maker, and working with the truss maker. All right, as you see here, we've generated a building that's going to give us the option to put in various different roof styles. Over here we'll work with the rotated rectangle. Here we'll place a rectangle shed roof. Place a dome roof over this circular section. We'll place a multi-sloped roof here. We'll place a barrel vaulted roof over this section. We'll use the polygonal roof tool to place a roof over this section here. Over here we'll change a hip roof to a gable and trim the wall to the roof and here we'll illustrate how a uh, roof works over a curved wall. Let's open our roof tool default settings which we can do either here with a double click or up on our info bar on the settings dialog icon. Now in geometry and positioning, this first box here gives us the relative height. And basically what we'll do here is we'll enter in the wall height of the where we want to place the roof. And that'll give us a pivot point. As you can see right here, we have a little pivot point under the roof. That pivot point, anything outside of that pivot point is going down and anything inside of that pivot point is rising acting like a hinge for the roof and that is basically our plate height of the roof this box here gives us the roof slope roof slant and there's a couple of ways we can work that we can work that in uh, degrees percent and also our pitch in 12 feet or in 12 inches. This box here allows us to select options for the home story. Uh, we only have one which would be either the current first floor automatic or select the story. If we select the story in this case we have a first floor, we have a roof we're going to say OK for the first floor. We also have our floor plan and section dialog box. I'm going to close this up see if we can stretch that out a little. And here we have some additional uh, default settings for the floor plan display. First one here is show on stories. If we click here we have several options. We can show on the home story only home and one story up, home and one story down, home and one story up and down, all stories, all relevant stories or custom. If we click on custom that'll give us an additional dialog box that we can work with. Set the parameters for how the roof is shown on the various stories. If we click on floor plan display we'll be given some additional options. Projected, projected with overhead, cut only, outlines only, and overhead all. Those will be detailed further in, a, in our cut plane lesson. In our structure dialog box we have a cut fill option and right here I've, have, I've got a composite structure shown. 
Uh, when that composite structure is shown, you'll notice that the vertical eave height and the roof thickness boxes are grayed out. The reason for that is, is that with this composite structure selected, we cannot alter the, uh, the roof thickness or the vertical eave height. But if we go into, say, a solid fill, say, two by wood frame, you notice that these boxes are now adjustable because we're having a very simple cut fill structure and we can adjust the roof thickness and the vertical eave height. We're going to go back to our 2x6 roof. Alright, the cut surfaces allow us to adjust the color of the cut fill pen. You can see how this works. Right now we're at the uh, thin gray fill. If we go to burgundy, you can see here how that affects the cut fill and the uh, composite. We'll go back. We can also apply the structure settings which will override whatever we have selected for the cut fill pen. That also works for the cut fill background pen, the cut line pen, the separator line pen, and its associated colors. We also have options for the outlines and we have options for the cover fills. Okay, if we click on the model drop-down box, uh, we have some options here which allow us to choose how the model looks in 3D. Right now I've got the top of the roof showing as copper verdigris, but we can change that to say Spanish tile. This button allows us to link the materials. If we unlink, then we can have the top of the roof say as Spanish tile, and we can have the edges say a paint whitewash, and we can have the bottom of the roof as say a um, wood walnut with the horizontal grain. We can also select the angle of our roof edge here. This box here, listing and labeling, allows us to change the ID name on the roof, label the roof, and we have a label settings dialog box that we can access here. And of course here we can select the layer for the roof. What I've done here is I've created a somewhat of a fantasy structure here that will allow us to put on several different roofs for demonstration purposes. This area here will be able to put in a rotated rectangle. Here we'll put in a uh, rectangular shed roof. Over the circular area we'll put a domed roof. Over this area we'll put a multi-sloped roof. Here we'll put a barrel vaulted roof. Here we'll do a couple of different things. We'll put in a, uh, a roof that starts with a 312 pitch and goes in this direction intersecting with a roof that has a 512 pitch going in this direction. This area here will put a polygonal roof using the polygonal roof tool. At this end we'll, uh, we'll change the hip roof that's created by the polygonal roof tool into a gable roof and then we'll trim the curved wall to the gabled roof and over here we'll show you what it a uh, roof over a curved wall looks like. Let's get started. Uh, generally speaking, I think the uh, easiest and most frequently used tool is going to be the polygon roof tool. With the roof selected and we click on the polygon roof tool, uh, first actually let's determine our, our plate heights here. We'll click on this wall and we know that we've got the top of the wall at 10 feet. So when I go back to the roof tool, we've got our elevation angle and pivot line set at 10 feet, which is where we want it to be because we're going to be setting this roof down on a 10 foot high wall. And basically all we got to do is pick a corner and start. Okay, we're going to start over with the roof tool. Select the polygonal roof method. And if we start here in the corner, on this part of the roof I want to come 
past the edge of the curved wall and 